360. Right, should, I, should we, um, what are we doing now? Partner, well, uh, I actually want to talk about uh, Rick's top 25. So the fact that you went KP, Rick, 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 raises a good point because Rickster was saying that... No, his dynasty draft, this is different again. No, 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 that was just a standard draft, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you were saying that you got you ended up picking up KP in round three, Brandon Smith round two, and then you got Cleary in round one with your first choice pick. So I think no matter what pick you get, uh, it's really important to just have a plan on when you are going to get crucial players or f- fill crucial positions and then having a list of sort of possibilities that you're actually happy to fill that with and then when you might be able to get them. That's the biggest thing which I've taken away from um, the way Rickster's been writing about some of these guys. But he's actually got a top 25. So you guys made it to 12, yeah? So you obviously did Nathan, Tommy, uh, the most, pa- Pappy, Harry, sorry, Teddy. Yeah. The most frustrating thing about that, having the list ready to go and everything is... You get someone pre-booked there, and you wait like eight, nine picks or something, and nobody grabs him, and then the bloke before he just takes that pick right out from underneath your nose. Like, oh. I'm normally that it, guy. It can make you really cranky sometimes. So is, <clears throat> do you have to sometimes move that forward if that happens? Like, w- what do you do in that situation? Panic. Yeah? Yeah, we, some, sometimes you've got 60 seconds or whatever, and it's like, oh, shit. See, this is where they Which say have... Do I need to go? Have have a plan. Have a backup plan. Yeah. Well, what are you what are you actually trying to fill? You're not trying to fill as many as a classic team. Are well, you, you can have twelve player yeah. drafts or seventeen players like a normal team. You can have thirteen yeah. on field, seven reserves. I see a lot of twelve twelves going around, or twelve, 12 and fourteen mans. Yeah, yeah. can't. Yeah, yeah, comps. You mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. In terms of comps, but yeah. Well, that's like, one where we I think you only got two centers and two back rowers. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so we got to Payne Haas, Tao, uh, TPJ. Do you have him on there? See, I wouldn't have Payne Haas that high, personally. No? You don't think he's just one of those picks that's going to get grabbed in one of those rounds? So if you want him he normally does. to fill that position. He normally does, but last year, like, he, he did regress a couple of points. I'm not saying he will this year, but I don't think he's high, as high out the food chain as he was last year. He's still, he's still easy... Uh, if not a first, a second round pick to some people. Still averaged yeah. 68 last year. Um, and look, slightly better squad there. Hopefully a bit more confidence. Um, he, he's a big boy and he's still only just sort of coming of age. So we still don't know what to expect out of him. I don't think. I think he's still definitely got more in the tank. So I think there's still potential there. And 68 a week, guaranteed. Is it worth yeah, it? Yeah, but then you've got other front rowers that are 65 and that they're going to fall in the third, fourth round. Yeah. So the ways to pick on Payne Haas that early, I think. What about TPJ? Would you go to that early on TPJ? Dave Fafita would be the only forward I'd be jumping up in yeah. probably in the top 10 for. Yeah, so he's number six on the list. He's got TPJ at number 11. What about Reed Marnie? Where does he sit? I mean, is he <clears throat> your number two hooker for the season? Uh, no, I've got Brennan Smith, Harry Grant as the two top ones. Yeah. And then probably Reed Cook. McInnes on the next level blow. There you go. But so all of those are going to get picked up in what the first two or three rounds. Yeah, definitely. Think so, yeah. yeah. So that's it. As everyone starts trying to fill their spine. Well, that's so, it. That can, that can also be dictated to you by what other people are doing. If you see three hookers go in a row, you're get getting on in on a hooker on your next pick for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's it. They're, they're going hot this yeah. round. Which then adjust, has to readjust your list. You go down one. You well, know what I mean? Are you better off planning your list around you, you, you list, positions? You list, yeah, I think you definitely go positions. You have your top five or whatever, top 10, 15 even, you probably need. There's also and you just some, cross them off as they go and you just get that next one. Once it, you're down to sixth or seventh on your list, you start loading that position. See, I think. On, see, you, that's on your list, you have to have a guy that you, you'll draw the fucking line at too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't want to roll in there with a... Um, Who's the worst half, half back in the comp? Dearden. You don't want to roll in with a Dearden thinking, yeah, I'm sweet, you know. I've, you fucked yourself <laughs> Let, waiting for a Tommy Dearden, you know. Uh, sorry, but probably poor yeah, choice. Or, like, or a Wade Egan or something There's somewhere like you've got to draw a line and say, well, I can't go under that player, so I need to snap him up then and there, or I'm in a bit of horror. It's like I think really for the first four rounds of draft picks, 
you really need to focus on filling, like you said, those spine positions as quickly as possible. You've just got to aim that I've got to get one of these guys per round. So do you stick? I mean, you can then prioritize perhaps by what guns are available, but being able to still being able to fill those positions. So you've got a pool of 30 to choose from, you know, which dwindles down to whatever it's going to be, the final position on round four. But for me, that seems like the most logical strategy to try and get in with. But <clears throat> I didn't realize you had to have such a comprehensive list. Like, you're right, you're talking, you know, 12 positions on the field, 5, 10 options for each of them, and then... At least 5, 10 options, because you've already got 9 other drafts. people or yeah. 11 other people in the draft, plus you've got to pick multiple of those positions. So your it's list a, needs to be pretty extensive. It's a big game to get your head around. But it is fun when you get there. Like, should I give some shout-outs? Because I have, I have a list of podcasts and places to go for people who are keen for draft, because I don't know, we don't know enough about draft to say, hey guys, we'll tell you how to do draft, but this this list of people that I have could probably help you out, if you know what I mean. Um, now, obviously the Fig Jammers, um, Rickster and the boys, they break down Dynasty draft, so Keeper Leagues and stuff like that, looking for the future. Then there's the Weekly Rubdown, Weekly Rubdown, uh, then three wise draftsmen, the head bin, uh, best draft something. Oh, I fully forgot that one. Oh, BDE, it's called BDE. Check that out. It's abbreviated B dot E B dot D dot E. Big draft energy. Maybe I don't know. We'll all just go with it. Um, and then <clears throat> the weekly rubdown boys with Jared, uh, Watto. Watto, you all see him. Commenting every week, he's one of the boys that puts in the questions. He's he's a wicked dude. Uh, Wado and the boys have got a weekly rub down rub lab on the Discord. So most years are in Discord through the Supercoach Hub. So I suggest if you can do that, uh, contact Wado. He'll give you a link, um, and it was called the weekly rub down rub lab on the Discord. It's for drafters pretty much only. I don't know if they do classic, but drafters get there if you really want to look into your draft and also to help you with your draft and just super coach in general got nrl supercoachstats.com because you can if you really want to look into some of these players that are a bit further down the list and and there's not much on them there's a good chance he's got something on them over there rowdy's top 25 i want to know where you guys think these guys should be sitting so Payne house you didn't think tpj you obviously wouldn't be putting in that realm either Reed Marnie, Cody Walker, yeah? Yeah. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Angus Crichton, second rower. Did he go him in the first two rounds? It, oh, yeah. Start I, second I can, rower. I can see logic yeah. to it. I can see logic to it. But J- Jag- me, me personally, not. No. Nah. Dally? Yeah. Yeah. Brandon Smith? Yeah. Jerome Hughes? Yeah. Yeah. Ryan Madison? Not no. Maddo. No. I'd go I'd, I'd, I'd path and stuff like that. That's where I'd probably start thinking about taking the pain houses and TPJs, depending on what I've already got in my bank. Yeah. Okie dokie. Uh, Damien Cook? Yeah. Oh. If, I do, was, if the hookers were going hot. Where do you guys rate Damien in terms of hookers this year? Fifth-ish. Fifth? Sixth? Uh, I, see, I see him going up and not this year, personally. Yeah. I, I hope he finds a bit better form. Look into your crystal balls. Where do you... Uh, See him finishing the year. Oh, got wait on, Harry. I've got Harry Smith, Marnie, McInnes. Fuck. You hate Damien Cook. I don't hate Damien Cook. You hate Damien Cook. Cook, maybe, you would maybe finish I do. third I or fourth know. for me. No, I got him fifth or sixth. Wow. Third or fourth for me. Cam Murray. Is he on Gus level? Mm. If he starts playing 80. So if you're picking your team tomorrow, no. Nah. All right, Reese Walsh. You might have even had average cast last Ooh, year. Reese Walsh, see, fullbacks, fullbacks are a bit thin by now. So then, by the times you've turned, by a little bit, by the time you've tiered out all your fullbacks, where's Reese Walsh sitting for you? He'd have to be fifth or sixth, wouldn't he? So fullbacks start going hot. Yeah, Turbo Teddy, Paps Trill. I got KP up there. But then, then Reese Walsh becomes a consideration, yeah, right? Then Walsh. Yeah, and then you're looking at a Walsh, Walsh. Guffo. Well, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd probably put him um, around the same point as Gutho. You never know. They could eat the, both of them could go yeah, either way. And then, you know who, I'm, who I like as a bit of a smoky this year, especially if Jackson Hastings and that go good? Fucking Dane, Dane Laurie. Laurie. 
I, I saw a picture of him earlier. I looked up at a picture of the Tigers, and I was just like, oh, I've forgotten about Dane Laurie. Like I, was, I, I yeah. wanted to draft him the other week, so I'm posting him from underneath me. I don't know who it was, but I just want him for reserve on the bench anyway. But The rest of the team wasn't so bad. He's a good and we'd footballer. we'd no Dewey in the team for the first half of the season either. He's going to be the pivotal point in But if you've attack. got the potential for somebody else to come back and push Hastings out or become a decent hooker for them, either of... Uh, uh, not push Hastings out, push Brooks out, or I become a decent hooker for them. They just don't, they just don't have the forward pack to lay the platform for their players, other players to achieve their goals. They just I don't think, think they've got they're the really backpack. weak in the middle. Yeah, see, I don't think they've got the backpack, even if they did, unfortunately, but... Uto's all they got. Yeah. A lot's going to be riding He's on He's only a 20-year-old with, kid. You know, it's it's the same thing. They get a couple, couple of, like, disheartening moments and it's hard for him to get back, you know, and, and it's, especially if it's on him to do it, you know. He's just a kid. A little Western Sydney pain, Haas, eh? Uh, all right, Cam McInnes in that list as well. Oh, well, yeah, K- KP, Reese Walsh, Cam McInnes. Yeah, I like Cam McInnes because he's dual position. And then he had Josh well, Cr- Josh yeah, Curran right. there, but I think he's gone cold on Josh Curran. Perso, Perso the other day commented on your thing, and um, he seems to think trap. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like can can you can you set him a, just a reason why he's not a trap? No, I just think. Well, you seen his work ethic in twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, I mean, oh, his breakout season, and I think playing lock, running the ball as well a lot more. Maybe even picking up some attacking stats with the ball playing through the middle. He'll still, if he gets to 65 to 80 minutes, he'll make his 50-odd tackles. So you're already starting at a pretty good point, better yeah. than most hookers. I so. think I think Perso's uh, concern might have been the fact that he was coming back from the knee injury. Oh, you're definitely waiting and letting his price bottom out. So you're not starting no, with McInnes? No, I won't in be the draft scenario. In the draft, right? yeah. But not in, in draft scenario, classic. Yeah, yeah. Not in classic. No, see, I think he was talking more in classic, but he was saying the same thing, watch and act. So, yeah, that's right. it. Hopefully he gets eased back. Drops to the round four hundred odd K mark and you snap him up. Happy right. days. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a great option. Uh, hooker. Well, that's it. I'm thinking about using him as a stepping stone. Especially if you haven't gone a gun hooker to start with, and you banked on someone to hopefully have a breakout year, like I'm thinking about doing. Um, Still. you could just swap them straight out, pretty much. Just have that breakout. You've been waiting, eh? People are waiting. I'm waiting for Jeremy Marshall King. I'm hoping he can be my breakout star. <laughs> Where are we at, Jazzy? Make sure. Super Coach 360 podcast.